got 100,000 views overnight, and I was like, oh, well, this is something. The ninth video got a million views overnight, and I was like, okay, so, like, I'm really onto something here. I mean, I'd made over a thousand videos on YouTube at the time. And so, stunning from that, he started, like, real estate content, right? Uh, how did you get into that from, I guess, going from software engineer to, like, um, get a property, went up, what point did you end up start making content after that uh, set said question to you? Well, I actually started making content before I started doing real estate, but it wasn't about real estate. Uh, I first started making a blog about the, the software engineering stuff I was doing. And I started making YouTube videos about the guy used to be an Alexa skill developer. So I would make like Alexa skills and so I was is showing my skills using YouTube and a blog. And then after that, I was like, oh, I really like this self-improvement stuff. So I just started making videos about self-improvement from that. And then as I was going through this process, buying the property, I was noticing that other people had the same problems. So I was like, oh, shoot, like I should talk about this. Like this is actually niche. Whereas before I didn't have a niche, I literally would just talk about the book I was reading. And, yeah. <laughs> and like who wants to listen to someone who isn't super successful? Yeah. Talk about a book that they're reading at the time. No one wants to listen to that. Yeah. I find a lot of people too, when they find their like calling or whatever is niche, um, it's always like solving a problem. Like, okay, this is something that I am aware of. I know these issues and not to fix them. And I can put this content out to like help or entertain somebody in the space. So it's actually very interesting you said that because I've heard that sim, uh, like similar response in different categories as well uh, for that. Yeah, I think being like being your own customer is a really important thing. It's like I'm building the thing that I'm solving. Yeah. That I have a problem for. And the Seth, so how did you get the content? So I've been making content since I was in middle school. Um, it started out by me making just like kind of like comic book style videos. Um, and it was just like compilation videos of uh, stuff that me and my friends have been doing. Then, like, I started taking it seriously by reviewing, like, rock and roll albums from the 70s and 80s. Um, and then I started opening up Pokemon card packs. Uh, this was in, like, 2011, 2012. Uh, so way, way before the trend of people actually giving a shit about Pokemon. It was just, like, super nerdy at the time, so. Yeah. Uh, I, mean, I just kind of let it go because none of that really took off. Um, I did I did the Pokemon stuff probably the longest. It was about a year and a half. Um, but I had my first success uh, during the pandemic uh, teaching people how to buy cars because uh, that, that was my background before I went into content creation, fully timeless. Uh, helping people with all different types of loans. Uh, I worked at one of the largest financial institutions in the world, processing loans all day. Uh, and when the pandemic like really kicked off, um, for whatever reason, the car market exploded. It did. You went absolutely crazy. People that don't are aren't aware, cars were used cars were going for more than like new cars. Yeah, it was insane. Um, so then I realized that nobody really knew how to buy a car. So a lot of the, most of the deals that were coming through that I would have to like either congratulate people for being approved for, um, or uh let them down and say, yeah, you can't finance 225% of what a car is like that. Mm -hmm. um, I realized just nobody knew how to buy a car. So I've gone on TikTok, honestly, out of pettiness um, and to try to alleviate my job a little bit and just teach people, this is how you do it. If you do it any other way, you're going to get screwed over. Um, and four videos in, I had a video, about four video in, uh, got 100,000 views overnight. And I was like, oh, well, this is something. The ninth video got a million views overnight, and I was like, okay, so, like, I'm really onto something here. Yeah. Um, and uh, most of the comments were like, well, how do I build my credit? Um, how do I save up? How do I, how do I do this? How do I do that? Basic personal finance stuff, and it's stuff that I was never taught in school, and I realized that other people weren't taught in school. So I kind of took the approach of, I'm going to teach stuff to my former self. Um, I had this, like, avatar of myself in middle and high school. I was like, I'm going to teach this kid how to do the stuff that we should have been taught. Yeah. When when you're starting that too, um, again, problem solving goes back to the same thing. You're just solving problems and 
helping people with that. Uh, you you tend to sometimes be very blunt. I'm not not tend, but you are very blunt. Yeah, I love you for that. Thank you. Um, hashtag honorary New Yorker. I don't know. I told you what he's doing. Yeah, I think he gets it. He's there more than me. <laughs> But yeah, so when you do your type of content, because your content is a little bit more different. It's not super edited. It's very, you know, real right there. Um, how do you think that differs? you think it's it's uh, it's great that you do that? Or would you rather be different up content? Honestly, it was, I didn't really know any other way to make content. Um, I took a lot of inspiration from uh, somebody named Nate O'Brien, because that's the way that he approaches his videos too. He just kind of like talks to the camera, like, here's what I'm going to talk about. Here's all the information about what I'm talking about and video. Um, and I really respect that because it's it feels like somebody's talking to me one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. um, so that's how I wanted to make videos too. And it's really easy. I don't want to get super complicated because I'm lazy. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. Also, I feel like it saves a lot of time too. Because, I mean, you talked about Tony right earlier. How you, uh, it takes you how long do they videos? Uh, 18 hours is an exaggeration. <laughs> Sometimes I spend a lot of time on a video and I get very little output from the video. Yeah. Yeah. Where where was your success coming from? Like did it take you a long time to build up your um your profile and your page, or was it more of like a couple of videos with my role? I'm gonna get to this or was it slow and steady? I mean, it wasn't necessarily slow and steady, but it I I basically was on YouTube for four years and then I switched over to TikTok and then Obviously, the opportunity at TikTok at the time was a lot easier. So I had luck in that sense of being one of the few real estate people at the time who was making content about real estate. Um, but I do think part of it was because I tried. I had made over a thousand videos on YouTube at the time. Oh, where you asked, yeah, oh, wow. I was doing like nine videos a week for I did that trade for a full year. And then I was doing a decent amount after that. Um, but because, because of that, plus the, the, the luck of me lining up at that at the same time that TikTok had extra potential, um, I started doing well on TikTok and then I basically repurposed the stuff I had on TikTok over to other platforms and Instagram and Facebook are starting to do something now too, uh, which are nice, but took a while. That's, I mean, that's really good. Honestly, that's the type of stuff that I want people to actually hear. Because a lot of people get discouraged nowadays when they post 10 videos and like, oh man, none of these did good. You had to do a thousand on YouTube. I didn't even work. And then you went to TikTok, you know? I still post YouTube videos and I only have 4,700 subscribers six years later. The plus to the bounce of the year. Jeez. Yeah. But you still, but, but that's like the the whole point is this, you push through. You said, I'm going to keep going. I think that's very admirable. Like that's something I really, really respect about somebody is that um, I think it's easy. It's not easy. But I do believe that it's easier for people that already have won in life or to have had success on social media or some platforms. Mm -hmm. And then to come back and say, um, you know, somebody that, that hasn't had any success, but they keep going. I feel like that I respect that person so much because they have everything to lose. They're not gaining anything, but they're still continuing to move forward. And so I think that's really, really respectable, honestly. 